Island live in one minute. Welcome to Lynn Cullen Live at PGHCityPaper.com. Email your questions and comments to Lynn at PGHCityPaper.com. Okie doke, here we are. That would be Chris Potter and moi, Lynn Cullen, and uh, Jess at the controls. And uh, it's uh, the 16th of May, the year of our Lord, 2012. (laughs) The year of my Lord, baby. <laughs> that is true, because in the year of my Lord, it's yeah, like 5,000-something. Like, yeah. I, I get mixed up. I don't keep track. Where's my fuzzy thing? What fuzzy thing? Don't oh, did you have, have a windscreen? Oh, you had a windscreen? No? I thought I had a fuzzy thing. All right. Well, never mind. It's okay. I'll it's called a windscreen. And I, I mean, I have one, but that's I create more wind than you. <laughs> That's what we pay you for, to the extent that we pay you for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Jesus Christ. Okay, so, uh, Potter. Yes. Is there any, like, story in the news that's just, you're dying to, you know, rant about, opine about, to draw our attention to? Uh, you know, I was sort of, I was sort of amazed that Pat Toomey, our illustrious senator, is calling for less bank regulation <laughs> in the wake of uh, J.P. Morgan losing another $2 billion bucks, and he's blaming that on on government regulation somehow. Yeah, That's I just problem. I was just trolling through my, um, you know, this here, and, and there are now people trying to make the case that what happened at J.P. Morgan was a direct result of over-regulation by the, uh, the feds. Meanwhile, there's a piece in um, Rolling Stone, Matt Taibbi, um, who just writes about how the the Dodd Frank bill, which is the financial overhaul that people are talking about, is basically was just basically just neutered to the point of being, yeah. you know, yeah, a eunuch or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just once you start with the word neutered, you're kind of obliged to carry that metaphor on. And I wasn't really sure where well, I was that going it, with no, it. No, yeah, it doesn't have that. It just it just you know the, first of all the the White House basically you know. Um, conceded on a lot of points early, um, and then you just have, uh, you know, Chamber of Commerce types suing to overturn individual provisions of the bill. You have the SEC and these regulators basically delaying any of the impact of so many of these regulations for years, which of course just gives the banks more time to file lawsuits to challenge their right to levy any kind of regulation at all. It's just a joke. So, and meanwhile, now you've got the now you've got Republicans blaming. Um, Instead of saying, you know what, this regulation didn't go far enough, the argument is somehow that it went too right, far. Right, right. Nobody's ever, I mean, I thought Well, you can't expect these people right, right, right. to cease and desist. Except I mean, they double down. To, whatever happened in the good old days when, like, when, 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 you know, Republicans were about individual responsibility. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like if you were, if, if somebody went out and robbed a bank. Yeah. They you know, nobody would say, if I robbed a bank, Pat Toomey wouldn't say, the problem is there's too much regulation about bank security, and we need to get rid of these, we need to get rid of these rules against armed robbery in order to prevent future armed robbery. He would say, you need to stiffen the penalties. But it never, somehow that never applies once you well, get to a certain income level. But bizarre. because, I mean, it really, it all boils down to that, um, it, again, it's, it's about faith. Uh, people like Toomey, right, have absolute faith in what they see as an unfettered marketplace. Right. They they do. And you can, it's just as, it, you know, you might as well try to talk the Pope into the fact that God doesn't exist. It, it, they just cannot be. Yeah, right. Ra- it's all about the invisible hand either way. Yes. That's right. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. 
And I just, it, I just, leaves, it leaves people like us so frustrated. And, yeah. I mean, and apparently, too, uh, what we should do is anytime, anytime it looks like we might be wrong about something, we should do what Republicans do. We just double down on our on our mistakes. And it's not it's not our nature at all. Yeah. They just, they of just it. I mean, hey, look, I'm, I'm as incapable as anybody else is just, you know, like I'm capable as anybody else is just shutting up and trying to change the subject when I think I've screwed up. That's just human nature. But to actually just go out and just be like, <laughs> you know, you're wrong. Oh, yeah. Screw <laughs> you i mean it's just it's incredible right it's just i mean being a republican right. means never having to say you're sorry that is true and that's that's their you know it's so interesting that is their strength yeah and of course their achilles heel but i don't know if it is even because you know i was looking at i was looking at some some polling data the other day and it says okay so we all know that congress is approval ratings are like in the toilet it's like 10 percent of people you have to think congress is doing good. yeah right, I exactly it, I, I thought it was eight uh, it's so it's it's like in there. yeah it's, it's it's real low yeah. and yet you look at sort of a generic question about who do you think should be in control of congress and a and a narrow majority majority of people think republicans should really i mean it's just what what are you people <laughs> what are you people smoking what has okay what has changed and let's see if we can figure this out what has changed in recent months about congress that that suddenly become so unpopular could it be that republicans have taken control of one of the houses and yet give them more give them more we you know, hate everything they for, do but let's give them more ability to do it for a minute and for a minute there you made the sound of your voice i had a flashback Uh-oh. took me back to city council chambers <laughs> Circa, this is not going well for no, me. I guess. Circa 1982. Right. Okay. That's when the city council oh, was yeah. a riot. Oh, yeah. It was a riot. A real I mean, it was Sophie Masloff, uh, Michelle Madoff. Madoff. Oh, yeah. Uh, you, you, Eugene, Eugene D. D. Pasquale. Pasquale um, Richard Givens. Yeah. Uh, oh, Wagner was there, too, was he not? Who? Was that I don't know. Wagner? I think he maybe came a little bit later. Yeah, okay. Um, it was an unbelievable circus. I mean, you the, the it, it was fun to go yeah. to those meetings because <laughs> it was you never saw people behave so badly, and and, right. and it, you wouldn't know that this was you know it was like spitballs and <coughs> there was a guy. It was some kind of a public hearing. There was a man. He his agony is etched in my consciousness. His face, the, his face. He, he had sort of like longish hair, and he stood up, and his voice got really high because he was beside himself. Yours got uh, high yeah, for a second yeah. there, and that's what maybe did it. And he, I remember he just said something that was sort of like the Rodney King thing. He said, "What is wrong with you people? <laughs> Can't you just?" He was just like you could tell. This is a poor man who, right. you know, he needed. He couldn't bear it. He couldn't <laughs> he couldn't take it in anymore. It was the oh god. And you know what? He got there were no answers for right. him that day and no and, and, <laughs> or for and, anyone and, else. No, and no satisfaction. <laughs> and I just want to say, Chris, it's the same yes, and will well. be ever thus. Jays. What is wrong? With, oh God! The anguish, the genuine anguish. He was almost in tears. Ah. Oh. Well, I'm sure he'd be happy to know that. See, I still council remember. these days is just as dysfunctional, yeah. but not as. Thirty not as years ago, I still yeah. remember that. I'm sure that guy's dead. <laughs> Dead he probably died right life. after that meeting. Right. Actually, <laughs> my, my heart. Oh God! Oh my. God. God, they were screaming at you. Cannot imagine those. I, I loved it. I loved it. It was like a, you know, it was a feature reporter's oh, yeah, dream. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. You could go down there any day and just shoot and maybe an hour of video and and have you know yeah. have something worthy yeah. of uh, John Stewart's show. Right. Yeah. It's wonderful. All right. Well, uh, Potter uh, edits a uh, newspaper called Pittsburgh City Paper. And it's out today, and I already ripped two things out of it. That's always when I rip things out of papers. I know. That's always I, can, a good I always sign. feel like that's when I come down here yeah. on a Wednesday and I see our fragments alongside those you of the Wall proud? Street Journal, the New yeah, York Times. Feel I feel like, by God, yeah. Well, the, my one of them is an ad, apparently. So. My biggest fine was oh. a ten dollars off at Sorgles. <laughs> All right, good. That's nice. Thanks for 
Well, God bless yeah. him. That's ten yeah. bucks. Yeah, I'm get, yeah. I could go grab a, a whole other and have a hundred. Yeah. I could I'll almost pay it. for the gas you burn yeah. driving up there, right? Well, that's true. <laughs> it, it, so, but that offsets the price of gas to go right. to Wexford. There you yeah, go. which we're all looking for an excuse to do, I think. I speak for us all. The other thing is, and this was reported on by the dailies, ah. but I appreciate what you did because it gave me some interesting numbers that I really hadn't seen as clearly before. This is the uh, the, the cops, the, the police department came out with uh, this annual report giving us all the numbers, right? Yeah. This many that's, this many that's. Uh, I mean, it's just a trove of yeah. of information. Like like um, day of the week in which homicides take place. Let me guess. Let me guess. Let me guess. Most homicides take place on Friday. You'd think so. The answer this Monday. year was Wednesday. Jeez, are you kidding me? <laughs> Over the hump day, mother. Push, push. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's today. Yeah. They might be our show. They Whoa. might be this show. People just like, oh, I'm so angry at Pat Toobie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. And it, it was, I mean, honestly, though, I think it was like there were 10 homicides on the Wednesday and like nine on Thursday, but it was not. Okay, it wasn't the weekend. When I think, I, I think it was and... a little, I think they were, I think maybe the number two day was, was Sunday, which you assume is probably as a result of Saturday night carrying over or something like that. Okay. So there was, it. you could say okay. that there was okay. a yeah. All right. But um, here's something. This is not surprising. Average age of a homicide victim in Pittsburgh, 28. Yeah. Average age of the person who killed the 28-year-old, 29. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a little older than I'm, I expected. It is a little older. I thought it'd be like 23, 24. Yeah. yeah. Oh, gosh. Okay. It's a lot of angst about turning 30, maybe. (laughs) (laughs) That, and it's a Wednesday. (laughs) Percentage of uh, Pittsburgh residents who are white? Yeah. 66. Yeah. Percentage of uh, police recruits who are white? 97%. Yeah, that's this year's class, the most recent year's class. (sighs) Here's the one that freaks me out, and I am so sick of following these cases in a in the in the paper number of officers who were fired for disciplinary reasons last year pittsburgh police officers four were fired by the cops for behavior egregious enough for the police to fire them number of those cops reinstated by the arbitration process four, four. It happens every time. Every time. Now, who are these arbitrators? I mean, some of these cases are so... The arb- I, who are the... Where do they... I, 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 I'm going like, to sound like that man. Who right. are the arbitrators? Some so of these cases arbit- are so clear. Well, I mean, so arbitration, there is a three-judge panel. One, one is picked by the city... And then the other is picked by the union. The union. Okay. And, and then the, the third. And then the third, if I recall correctly, is randomly is just chosen by the the arbitration board. I don't think okay. either. So so all of these votes always come down to two to one. I mean, like you look at these, and it's almost never the case that they all unanimously say, "Oh yeah, we agree." In any of these contested things, it's it's a two to one thing. And so I mean, for example, I mean we can remember some of the. Um, some of the cases, you know, one of the officers who who was terminated um, after a domestic violence dispute, and um, the judge tossed that case out, um, and then uh, he was able to get his his job back because oh, he I said the underlying that. the underlying circumstances, you know, where, where I was charged with this offense, and now I'm I've I've been you know exonerated was how he would portray it, I'm sure, and and the arbitrator said, well, yeah. You're right. So mm-hmm. back you go. You know, I mean, the, the city's position in those things is typically um, we've done our own internal investigation that's independent of what any criminal charges are. And this is what we've, you know, we think that this was conduct unbecoming. And so we're getting rid of this person on that basis, regardless of how any f- subsequent charges go out. And then it just never works out for them. Okay. When the cops do a warrantless search, the odds of the person that's uh, the uh, on the receiving end of the search... Uh, the odds that they're black uh, is 62% yeah. are black. Now, 
When is, I mean, because I know there's, a con, I, I thought you needed a warrant. So what is and when is a warrantless search allowed? Yeah, I think there's, I think, I think the rules on that have, have been evolving, thanks in part to the to, yeah, Supreme to, Court. Yeah. But, um, and generally speaking, I think there has to be some sort of notion of, you can't criminality. Just, yeah, you can't just walk up. There has to be some sort of, you know. Okay, so they stop a car. It's or a, they stop it's a, a pedestrian. Stop a car. And they're smelling marijuana in the car. Yeah, that's enough reason. Or if maybe. they, or, or if it was somebody on the street, same kind of thing. Because a lot, I think about, I can't remember off the top of my head, but most I think are more, pedestrians. Th- more than a third are pedestrians. They're black they were, people walking. They were, they were divided. They were divided into pedestrians, drivers, and then passengers in a car walking while black. Yeah, you know, it says about a third of people. Jeez. And so about one out of two of those stops results in either the person being arrested or some sort of property being seized from them or both. So I will say in defense of, of the of the police that um, if you look at traffic stops, um, the numbers are actually, and this was sort of interesting, if you look at the number of traffic stops, that also is broken down by race. And that was actually fairly consistent with the racial breakdown of the city. So, so they, it, there wasn't a lot of yeah. Uh, so this this warrantless so the warrantless searching seems um, really jumps out for that reason as well, which is that if you look at other sort of day to day interactions with people, and if I recall correctly, don't hold me to this, but if I recall correctly, you were actually as a black driver slightly more likely to get off with a warning than if you were a white driver. Wow, yeah. I'm trying to get my head around that. Yeah. Hmm. Do you recall when uh, Pope, uh, who, is it, who, is it, who is the Pope, the Polish Pope, uh, John Paul? Yeah, the second. John Paul uh, the, no, the first, you're right. The first was the Polish, yeah. Well, like when he died. Yeah. And that poor guy, I started getting, I, I was freaking out because they paraded his body around for like, a, it was worse than Reagan who couldn't get buried. <laughs> They slept him from coast to coast, back again, lying right. here, lying there. And I mean, I'm sorry, but you know, the Jewish way of burial is yeah. within 24 hours. So to me, it's just like, get that poor person buried, for God's sakes. Anyway, so obviously Christians have a different thing. <laughs> yeah, this, yeah re- but- <laughs> this reminds me of a story, a brief one about my predecessor, um, who was Jewish. And one of our colleagues here, her father had died, and we went to the funeral, and, and my boss... I mean, you know, he's laid out there. My boss just was like, "Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Who's laid out? Oh, this, this wasn't the, the Jew- co- no, the oh, father of, oh, of oh, our colleague. Oh, and your and the Jewish boss, boss freaks and out. My, yeah. and, my, and my boss just kind of went, "Goyim." <laughs> 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 like he just, it just completely <laughs> wanted nothing. <laughs> I don't even think he went into the room. I think no, he stopped very, at the threshold. It's, it's, it was just like, that is close enough for me. Yeah, Jews do not believe in... Yeah. It, actually, what Jews believe is that to it is unbelievably rude, to, just uh, rude to look at a dead body that's lying there yeah. because they can't look back. Oh, is that, what it, is that yeah. the basis of it? Wow. Well, I don't know. That's part of it. They can't look back. And so they're just, and, 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 and to show them proper respect, you actually do not stare at them. You yeah. do not. Right. And it, it also, well, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Jews think the, the Jews do feel their way of death um, and burial is definitely superior. Yeah. <laughs> Did you ever read Jessica Mitford's book about this stuff? The American I, Way of Death? Ages ago. Ages ago. I've got, yeah. it's, if you haven't read it, it's worth... Well, I mean, it's the just, funeral home industry yes, more exactly. than anything. Yes, exactly. But, right. I mean, but a lot of that is about yeah. how this industry sort of created this idea that, that some of us have lodged in our heads that, you know, there should be this final sort of moment where you look down on the person and that's like you have this mental snapshot and that's what you carry. Why would you rest. want yeah. the thing you carry to be of them yeah. made up yeah. as they never looked in life and looking like some yeah. ma- mannequin. I mean, I, 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 but there's, I, I would just, so if creepy. folks out there haven't read it, even though it's, I mean, it was written, I think, in the 50s or the 60s, I can't remember exactly when. It, it's dated in some ways, but it's just, I mean, every other page just has some hilarious, she's a very droll writer. Yes. And there's a line there where, she, where she's talking about somebody who comes before a, a meeting of, it's like a legislative panel about funeral, and, and he's got the ashes of, of a beloved one, and he just slams it down <laughs> before the, and, and the next, and her next 
next line is, once the dust had settled, comma. <laughs> <laughs> that was, just, there's like lines like that on every other page. People should read The American Way of Death by Jessica Mitford. Just yeah. One of the great, that's a, that's one of the great a, unsung, I think, sort of muckrakers. Well, that was, yes, that was definitely considered a an yeah. eye-opening yeah. Uh, book. Yeah. Would it come out in the early 60s? Yeah, I would, uh, that would be my guess. Yeah, that that's what I'm 60s. thinking, too. Anyway, I'm sorry. We, do, we no, 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 but that, 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 no, but that's okay. I, because it, was, it brought up something else about, oh, I, when, my, when my son was like five years old, four, four years old, the mother of his, of the woman who babysat him, his, the, the, the nanny who took care of him when I went to work, um, died. And he knew that. Old right. woman. Yeah, yeah. Right? Right. So I went, I, I knew that Yaya's daughter, the nan, would love to see Sam. So we went to the funeral home. I had, I don't know what I was thinking that I brought him there because I was not going anywhere. I was holding him. I was, we were not going anywhere near Yaya's casket. We got in there, and she sees Sam. She says, oh, Sam. You know, I, she takes Sam from my arms and makes a beeline for uh, Yaya's casket. Yeah, yeah. And I'm thinking, Jesus, no, no. <laughs> and the next thing I know, I see my son being tipped into this, <laughs> into this casket. <laughs> He's being tipped. <laughs> Into a casket, and oh God! Somehow, and he didn't scream or anything. He did whatever it was, and 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 we, I got, uh, I was so freaked. I by I got him out of there. Didn't say anything to anybody. I got him out of there. Put him in his little seat in the back of the car. Got driving, driving. Thinking, what the hell am I supposed to? What am I supposed? To? And from the back says, he says, Mom, why? Why was Yaya so cold and hard? Oh, man. Cold and and hard. These are those, (laughs) you know what? These are those parenting moments where you think, (laughs) I can't think of a thing. I don't know what I said. I don't know what I said. It was, oh, God. Yeah. And I, I know my, my, my sister's daughter had a similar experience with her own grandmother and was brought in uh, to see uh, Mama, yes, they called her. And she let out a shriek yeah. and yeah. said, ah, Who shot Mama? <laughs> 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 oh, and God. scene. <laughs> Find out the answer next season. <laughs> Who shot Mama? <laughs> oh God! Was it the angry air cut out of the will? Dun dun dun. Yeah. And then I got not too. Unfortunately, not too long after Yaya was buried, her daughter, my nanny died oh dear yeah and my son was only seven or so and it was very hard very hard on oh, him. Yeah, she sure. was like a grandmother to him and we went to the funeral and we were um ushered up to sit right behind the family um and sam was right on the aisle and i was here and it, it was a greek greek orthodox and i, I was didn't, gonna guess i didn't yeah. know what to expect but um all of a sudden, the casket comes up the aisle, and it stops, and it's open, and it stops right next to my son, and there's his beloved uh. Athena, and I'm thinking, oh my God, please! And then eventually, she was brought around to the front, and before the service was over, we all got up. Row by row, yeah. and went over, yeah, yeah. and kissed her. <laughs> Same thing, like oh, Yaya. Yeah. He had kissed her. Yeah. 
Now at seven, I think it was more traumatic because yeah, he, sure. knew yeah, he knew her, and he yeah. said it didn't. He couldn't believe that was a thing. He said that didn't. Look. Yeah. He was so confused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why do we do this? Yeah, Why do we do this? His name. His name was Athena. Oh, she was Greek. Yeah, I know, but still. What's know. wrong with? I don't know. Athena. It's just a, you know. It's a beautiful name. It's a, it's it's a name of a goddess, of course. Yeah. It's like the death of Athena is like a. It's really it's big. like a plot out of Sophocles or something. Well, it's and Athena like, yeah. was the death of the, of Athena was huge, huge. Yeah. All right. So the Pope. We have a call. Mm-hmm. We're never going to get to this, are we? <laughs> <laughs> Hello. 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 Talking about dead people and funerals. <laughs> yeah. You got to do it the way my family does it. All right. We do this every time. We don't have funerals like everybody else does. Somebody dies. My mom and dad die. Um, you know, a couple years apart. My grandparents died a couple years apart. Uh, first off, they're immediately cremated. Yeah. And we don't have a big ceremony or anything like that. Sometime in the future, a couple months later, when everybody can get together, we get together and we have a party the likes of which go down in history. That makes sense. Yes. A celebration. Yeah. Oh, just yeah. massive. I mean, my family's good at doing that anyhow. <laughs> and um, so, for instance, like my mom and dad. Okay, first off, my mom. My mom died in 2004. And she was in, like, a little Chinese takeout box in the cupboard <laughs> above the coffee pot in my dad's apartment for, you know, four or five years. Right. Until my dad died. <laughs> and this is just three years ago or so. Right. And so I said, well, what are we going to do with them? What do we do, you know? We, we don't bury people and then have plaques and go to the graveyard every so often, you know? We just don't know what to do with them. Right. So I came up with this great idea. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, we grew up down in... Um, a suburb, style hills of Pittsburgh, and there's a lake about a half mile from our house. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful lake, Peter's Lake. Yes. If you know the area. It's a, yeah. it's a beautiful little lake on the middle of nowhere. I said, let's look it up online and see if, and we found one online, a little urn that dissolves in water. <laughs> so we thought, well, there we go. We'll put our parents in this, and we'll float out into the middle of the lake, right. and we'll put this thing in the lake, and it's supposed to float around for a few minutes, you know, and then slowly dissolve. <laughs> And we, you know, we were all out there in kayaks in a canoe. There's four of us. Right. And um, you know, my sister had this thing. And, uh, you know, leave it to my parents. Good God. Um, the, the, the idea was we'll put it and we'll all say something nice and profound and watch it float away or whatever. So uh, we put it in the water and the thing drops like a rock. <laughs> <laughs> Straight to the bottom. <laughs> bye bye. And all we could figure is, is, you know, there's too many people in it. It wasn't right. really, like, <laughs> 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 And this thing is a bloop. Like I said, leave it to my mom and dad. He always think we're going to have this wonderful, profound moment. Right. And instead, we're all just laughing so hard that we almost tipped over yeah. the face. <laughs> Well, there's lots of funny stories about attempting to scatter ashes. I'm think Sally Wigan has a funny one. Her mom, who I who I knew, her, Sally and her sister brought her mother's ashes back to this like sort of cliff top, mountain top in Maine, where she oh, yeah. had uh, grown up on the on the ocean. Right. And you know they maybe said a word or two about and and they they threw. Her ashes out toward the ocean. Blew <laughs> 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 it right back at him. Blew it back at him. It's in their mouths, their eyes, their face. They're like, Jay, no. you know, they're choking. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> That's a little lesson for anybody out there in Radio Land. You want to stand up wind of that stuff. Yeah. Or... Prevailing winds. Yes. Always check the prevailing winds. And they're usually going to be blowing in from the sea. Yes, they so will be. So, um, well, th- hey, thanks for the laugh. Yeah, great call. Bye. Bye. Okay, so I'm going to get to this now. God. Oh, because I have a story about my uncle's ashes. But go ahead. You could do your thing. That's Are fine. you kidding? No, I actually do. But go, go, do it. Do it. No, no, it's better for you to do this. It's just, it's a, it's a, my, my uncle was a sort of singular guy, and um, he is buried in a, in a cemetery in Lone Pine, California, which, for those who know the area, is in the middle of the Mojave Desert. And he was cremated, and so his burial plot was his favorite pair of cowboy boots. The ashes emptied into them. And we're standing around there, and, and for this, I mean, this is a desert, obviously, so the, this cemetery is surreal. It's just this little sort of quad of green in the middle of not green. And and my cousin, his son, then was burying, you the know, boots. actually putting, was burying the boots, and he had on um, Mozart, who was my uncle's favorite composer. And 
Meanwhile, there were these wildfires burning like half of the state of California. And the smoke was just like pouring over the Sierra Nevadas and the Al- uh, and the Alabama foothills, and so it was just like one of those things you just have this vision in your head for the rest of your life of my cousin just shoveling dirt over these of these over this the pair of boots with Mozart and smoke wafting all over yeah, the entire no, scene. that's it was something surreal. That's, yeah. Surreal. And Wondrously surreal. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, it wasn't a funny story, but it was just one of no, those moments. No, it's wonderful. Just like, wonderful. Anyway, so the Pope. No, oh. we got to take a break. Oh. <laughs> this is great. All right. We're, okay, we're, we're, yeah. Quick we're break. shopping this story around as long as the Pope's remains were, yeah, it's trafficked. That's right. Oh, God, how they made, that poor man with his little red shoes pointing up in the air. <laughs> just on and on and on. Okay, we got to take a break. Email your questions and comments to lynn at pghcitypaper.com or call Lynn at 412-316-3381. Lynn Cullen Live will return in a moment. Pittsburgh City Paper is available now. Pick up one today for Rob Zombie, Brian Regan, the Abbott Brothers, and Will Eisner. Pittsburgh City Paper, available at over 1,700 locations throughout western Pennsylvania and on the web at pghcitypaper.com and on your smartphone at citypapermobile.com. Are you struggling with your mortgage payments? Call 888-995-HOPE to talk one-on-one with a housing expert about your options or visit makinghomeaffordable.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Treasury, HUD, and the Ad Council. Get Lynn Collin live on your smartphone. Go to citypapermobile.com now for Pittsburgh City Paper's brand new mobile app. Get the latest restaurant reviews, event listings, movie times, and of course, Lynn Collin live on your smartphone. Citypapermobile.com. Now, it's back to Lynn Collin live at pghcitypaper.com. All righty, welcome back. Okay, so... I, when they were burying the, 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 the Pope, yes, John Paul II, um, that was you know that was a big story and it was carried and I watched and was appalled and but there was a they had like a play by play guy I mean you have to mm-hmm. um, I know when they do a you know a, a play by play guy well they did <laughs> okay. it's just like when here like when they ordain a new right. bishop here the local stations carry it live and they got a play-by-play guy usually right. it's like you know you know a priest who's explaining what's going on right so when the networks did that with the pope their play-by-play guy i will never forget him he was and i'm sure a lot of other women remember this guy he was so gorgeous he was movie star gorgeous All right you could die when you looked at him and you thought, that's a priest? That, <laughs> what a waste. That, oh, oh, you couldn't bear it. You thought, there's no way. How could, oh my God, look at him. He's beyond belief gorgeous. You're going to you're gonna tell us something shocking about his personal life is what you're about to do is my guess. Popular priest who uh, fathered child there. says he'll step aside. All right. So he was using what God gave him. You know, when I saw that this, that, I, I, when I first read about it, I thought, I wonder if it's the, and you see the first adjective that they use to describe this guy is telegenic. Oh. The telegenic American priest. So was the woman in question? Uh, we don't know. Is, oh, we don't know anything about who. I'm not aware. This wasn't like him taking advantage of some. No, no, no. He's, he, he's going to uh, take a year off and think about his grave <laughs> transgressions. It's and crazy. then uh, he'll be back. Uh, he's taking a year off from uh, lecturing, by the way, on ethics, um, which is his yeah. daily wick. And uh, he's written books like uh, Knowing Right from Wrong, A Christian Guide to Conscience, Father Williams. I mean, it obviously it doesn't shock the conscience the way so many other <laughs> stories from the No, no, have, I mean, so. at least, no. I yeah. mean, so he had sex with a woman, big deal. Yeah. I mean, uh, but he, he fathered a child and he <clears throat> got caught. Lucky woman, that's all I want to say. <laughs> <laughs> Far out gorgeous. Hmm. Man. Okay. So that was a lot of buildup for that story. Well, really. I know it was yeah. nothing, but I, the buildup was yeah. better than yeah. Uh, yeah. But that's fine. Okay, so um, did you see that the new first lady of France? I don't know anything about her. Here she is. She's not going to be as hot as Carla Bruni, is she? Close. Well, she's not bad. Man. No, not bad yeah. at all. She's really 
very good looking and good looking in a smart way you know mm -hmm. she looks smart and stuff yeah. anyway how do these little funny looking french men score these babes power is the ultimate aphrodisiac yes it is it, it, it is it is that's true. all you can say no that's true but here's the thing <laughs> that's how i landed my wife anyway <laughs> <laughs> but there so she's moving into the elysee palace yeah. uh -huh. with uh Oland, the he looks like a shopkeeper yeah. Anyway, they're moving in. They're not married. <gasps> Can you did... imagine that happening oh, in the yeah. United oh, yeah, States no, of no, America? Yeah. yeah. They're not married. Wasn't there some whole deal with him and then there was that other the woman who'd run for for president before and 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 he was married to her and then she left him for somebody else and everybody was like dating everybody else and it That's was right. like, only right? was this like like there 5 years ago like there was that, some right. like weirdness i just yeah. i didn't even i just like it was totally... Oh and then there was when Mitterrand finally the last socialist uh, right. french president the, the Hollande is now the current one uh, at his funeral it was quite a scene cuz yeah. you had Francois you had his wife and standing next to her, his mistress, the mistress's daughter from right, him, right. her daughter from him, and nobody, you know, the wife gets along with the mistress, so whatever. But I thought that's got to be a first, a first lady who's really not, I mean, she just lives with the guy. And it turns out that's not, you know, a lot of people would say, oh, the French. Right. right. Well, it turns out the German president right now. Merkel? Not Merkel's. Oh, the Chancellor, president. Oh. The president? Yeah. He ain't married to the woman that he's living with. Yeah. In whatever they have for. Let's not even start about Italy and all that stuff going on. Well, <laughs> some I, kind of continental thing, I guess. No, it's some kind of American thing. I mean, we are the uh, ones that are out of step with. It. Don't you think? Yeah. Although this does this does sound like. I mean, I guess I'll be impressed when there's a woman running the show who's capable oh. of, of having that kind of thing. I mean, this. I mean, this oh, in, Fr in France, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. I and mean, speaking of that, did you see that? Uh, what's his name? Uh, Khan. Uh, yeah, sued the. Is now countersuing the woman, the maid he raped in uh, in New York for one million dollars. Like I'm sure she's good for it. What a yeah. jerk. He's meanwhile under more charges for yeah. engaging in orgies. <laughs> Do you read the account of this Belgian woman who was shipped into Washington, D.C. when he was still head of the IMF? And this is right before he then went to New York and raped the uh, other woman. It's like the night before. There was a sex orgy uh, that he was, you know, part and parcel of. And she said, I mean, he must be the most awful guy in the world. That, I mean, she was saying he, he you know, he had her by the hair. He was, I mean, th he's awful. Right. Belongs in jail. Son of a bitch. And yet, came yay close to, I mean, could be the leader of France right now if not for that He would day. be. Yeah. He would be, and not the socialist with, yeah. the, uh, with the beautiful non-wife. Uh, Mary writes, when my dad goes, planning his funeral will be like mailing a package at the post office. <laughs> Cheapest way to go. What is that? <laughs> and before she died, my mom told me she wanted her ashes placed above my dad's casket because she liked to be on top. Man. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Salty. Wow. I can tell you're, you see, you, you, you come from a repressed, a waspy kind of a family, no? I come from a waspy community. I don't, I don't, yes. Maybe. Not a family? No, I mean, you know. Well, uh, Lynn says, I omitted this important aspect sense. of the story from uh, Father Williams, that's the gorgeous guy, was the most visible American member of the Legionnaires. Yes, right. Oh. Yes, yes, yes. I didn't want to get into that whole can of worms. A powerful and conservative Roman Catholic religious order that has been turmoil since the death of its charismatic founder, who turned out to be a what? He was a serial pedophile. Oh, geez. I, you don't know, I don't know about this about, guy? I don't know anything about this. Marcial, no. Marcial del Galado or something. He's a Mexican Galado. priest. Um, and he had he apparently had sexually abused seminarians left and right, misappropriated money, fathered uh, a gaggle of children, uh, some of whom he later abused. So uh, the Legionnaires, that's quite a crowd there. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know and Ray, who is Catholic, writes, these guys are a creepy, evil bunch of perverts. 
it's got to be bad if the Vatican's outraged. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Mm. Oh, okay. What else I got here? Okay. Hey, FBI, inquiry, J.P. Morgan. What are the odds of that going yeah. anywhere? Once again, we see the hand of government intervention interfering with the free market. Okay, what do you make of, and please explain to me how, after this $2 billion loss, they happen, it just coincided with a um, shareholders meeting held in Florida, what, yesterday or the yeah. day before? Yeah, yeah. And uh, the enraged shareholders of J.P. Morgan um, voted the CEO, Diamond. Yeah, Jamie. Jamie, for those of us who know him. Yeah. Yeah. Twenty-three million dollar salary yeah. for his good work yeah. at overseeing the loss of two billion and <laughs> right. having the FBI on their tail. Yeah. I would have done it. How for half. does it will you please explain to yeah. me? Yeah. But I, I just want the shareholders of JP Morgan to know if they're looking for a new CEO, I will happily preside over the loss of $2 billion for half of what they paid him. I could, too. They're talking about, the funny thing is, I mean, the, funny, the, the thing is they're talking about clawing back the salary of the woman who was in charge of the department. I never knew like that 50. term, by the way. All of a sudden, I've claw learned back, a new part. Yeah. Claw back. Yeah, I like and it, it. it figures that it yeah. comes out of Wall Street. Yeah. Claw back. Claw back. And, and he's even quoted as saying, we will attempt to claw right. the, jeez. Yeah. Okay, they're, so they're going to try to get the, um, well, of course, the money that came to the geniuses who, who lost this money. Because you can lose $2 billion, but the geniuses who lose it actually have been remunerated yeah. with hundreds of millions. Right, right. Because these things take time to, to the bottom to fall out, and you're getting paid with but quarterly explain, or annual bonuses. Explain shareholders um, doing that. You know, I got a proxy in the mail the other day because, you know, I have mutual... I guess I have some investments. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sounds I, like you're really the kind of activist shareholder that we need more of in this economy. That's right. And it said <laughs> that I'm supposed to... gave me the name... Four people yeah. that the, they were the saying uh, they wanted on the board. I don't know these four people from Adam. But all I know is if the board wants them, I don't. So I... I've never, I no, 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 no. <clears throat> Send it back. Yeah. They'll all be on. Right. Is there, I mean, it's a remarkable, uh, uh, you know, a few weeks ago we had a chain of events here with um, EQT and, and another company, too, where there was some shareholder activism, some demonstrations yes, yes, outside yes, of yes. meetings. And uh, there was a good piece, uh, I think it was in the Post-Gazette, I think it was in the Post-Gazette, it was basically about how these little stirrings of shareholder revolt, I mean, it obviously... No, the direction of these companies has not been changed. EQT will continue to do, you know, natural gas fracking and things like that. But um, even these little stirrings are being companies are finding ways to marginalize them. So one of the things they're doing, and this one just sort of blew my mind, is they're, they're sort of dubbing the official part of the meeting lasts like an hour, and then all the rest of it, where shareholders actually speak and make their concerns known, is is sort of a post meeting thing. And the reason they do that is so the company doesn't even have to take notes. Like they don't have to do minutes of this stuff. So it's just like this whole idea, and I guess this gets to the Toomey thing and what you're talking about. That you know, Pat Toomey wants you to believe that the best corrective for all of these abuses is the free market. This sort of supposed, you know, they'll be punished by their investors if they do wrong. Oh yeah. But what we'll we see that. is what we see is is, and it's no accident that investors are a quiescent bunch, and they and the companies want them to be that way. And there's no accountability. There's no accountability. Jamie Dimon's just going to keep rolling on. And, and this is, people, again, should read this piece in the Rolling Stone by Matt Taibbi, because one of the things he says is, look, the, what we were told was we would never have to bail these banks out again. Huh. Huh. We are absolutely going to have to bail these banks out. You can out tell again. we are. Yeah. You're Came absolutely going to have done. to do it. Absolutely going to have to do it. How, how, it's unbelievable. How do you get anything, how do you move forward in this country when yeah. the debacle that occurred um, that has us still trying to crawl out of uh, the economic hit we took, brought to us by the banks, and the lack of oversight. How, and you got a Toomey saying there's too much oversight. We right. got this happening with uh, J.P. Morgan. What does it take for people to... I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's because it's, it's it's complicated. Well, it's because faith again. It's I'm it's sorry. faith. It's complicated. I also I do. I mean, you are going to yell at me, but I mean, I have to. I have to put a, a big chunk of the blame on the Obama administration as well for basically 
going along to get along. You know, I mean, Tim Geithner is, oh, you know, I, is gonna, our guy. I'm not going to disagree. Um, you know, I just... I'm not going to disagree. Damn it. Okay. How about if we take a quick little break? I know we okay. just took them. Then we'll That's be right. back on track, and we'll come back and uh, talk about something other than the financial matters, which okay. is always depressing. More is on the way with Lynn Cullen Live. Go to BergBargains.com for great deals on tickets to the Opera, City Theater, Symphony, History Museum, and Carnegie Museums. BergBargains.com, Pittsburgh's only online deal site where the deals don't expire. Check out this week's big deal. Over 40% off authentic laser lipo treatments from FDA-approved Dorona. BergBargains.com. Bo and Vela wants to thank all of southwestern Pennsylvania, the USA, and the world for helping to liberate his native country of Equatorial Guinea. Equatorial Guinea has suffered 43 years of dictatorship, 43 years of human rights, abuses, 43 years of corruption, and 43 years of kleptocracy. Even with $5 billion in oil revenue in 2011, the 700,000 citizens of Equatorial Guinea earn less than $2 per day. A proud Mount Lebanon resident, please help Gustavo and Vela usher in the 21st century by allowing freedom, democracy, and socioeconomic prosperity by the rule of law for the next 43 years and beyond. Email him at presidentandvela at yahoo.com to help free Equatorial Guinea. You're listening to Lynn Cullen Live at PGHCityPaper.com. Once again, here's Lynn Cullen. And Chris Potter. Yeah, I want my own billing. Yeah. And a sock for my microphone. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I'm, I'm issuing demands now. Look out. I'll give you a sock. <laughs> That's good. That's it. Yeah. A nice Three Stooges quality to it. <laughs> <laughs> it did. All right. So, what do we make of this? So, there's this uh, this guy who's up to become a judge, and the governor, the Republican governor of Virginia, sends it. I guess the um, in Virginia, the House has to yeah. okay the. I'm thinking the Senate usually does that, but no, it, whatever. The House has to sign off on it. And uh, the House is also controlled by Republicans. They rejected their own governor's nomination. And you have to say, wow, I wonder what that was about. And the answer is? Gay. Couldn't be trusted. To you? Now... I was saying to Jess kudos before, to him for... remember what they used to say about, um, oh, we're not just, I mean, we love gay people, you know, love the sin. No, love the sin or hate the sin. Hate the sin. Mm-hmm. This kind of stuff, mm-hmm. this sort of punitive, nasty denial of promotion or, right. or anything. Mm-hmm. And it's always it's the Republicans that did it. Um, how do they get it? And, and and there was heavy lobbying by the I always love this the Family Foundation. Um, and they say he couldn't be trusted. Right, that he would legislate from the bench. Right. <laughs> unlike unlike their them, guys. yeah. <laughs> unlike who overturned yeah, right. duly passed acts of Congress. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. And this guy, the, the gay guy in question, by the way, was a uh, a former f- decorated fighter pilot. Also, I mean, he served in the he was a naval officer, and that was another reason these some of these Republicans said I couldn't vote for him. Obviously, he lied to get into oh, the I navy. See. Yeah, right. He misrepresented his sexual right. bent. He should have told. That's right, because then, of course, he couldn't have yeah. served. Right. These people are beyond. Contempt. I, I just, and the, yes, the Republican governor, the one who's being yes. touted as yes. a potential vice yeah. presidential. Oh, that won't happen now. No, I suppose he not. can't. He, he he can't be. It's impossible. Oh, now that he's done this. Yeah, I mean, now that this has happened. I but just... he was the one who had that ultrasound bill too, and backed yeah. off. Yeah. He backed off yeah. a little bit. Yeah. On that. Um. I can't, I'm sorry, he had a good quote where he was just, what the? Yeah, I mean, that is that is the silver lining to the cloud here, I think, is that 
you know, 10 years ago, could you even imagine a Republican governor putting up somebody like that in the first place? It would be hard to... It would be hard to believe. I mean, there's a, there's an interesting memo going around, which you may have seen or talked about, that was circulated um, by a sort of political advisor during the Bush administration, saying this party needs to, the GOP needs to get on the right side of this issue because we're on the wrong side of it. And one of the things he said is, you know, for, for years, it was sort of like a 1% a year increase in the number of people who, you know, were in favor of gay marriage. And he said that in recent years has gone to 5%, yeah, which just is just a huge jump. He said this bro. isn't about a generational shift, although that's part of it. It's about people who believe the one thing, changing their minds now that they know people. They realize that within their own families or their neighborhoods, um, that people that they know and care about are gay, and that's forcing them to reevaluate Mm-hmm. What is it? And there's just, I mean, you, I think we were on last, I think it was just last week you and I, and we were saying, ah, Obama couldn't possibly. <laughs> and it's he, good did. That he, it was, he, he did. He did that next, day. Next so day. obviously, so this proves that the White House does not listen to our show, which. Um, That's okay. That's okay. Yeah, yeah. I was, you know, and then people trying to say it, it, it's a cynical political move on his part. Well, I don't think so, because there's no way to know how that... Yeah. I, I mean, in terms of the black churches, I think it's problematic, actually. And we've got a call, apparently. Hello. 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 Hey, Lynn. George yeah. from... Uh, Hi, George. Hi. Uh, there's a subject I want to bring up. I want to get off my chest, and it's something you've ranted about before. Um, have you heard the latest uh, Range Resources commercial? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Uh, but no, I'm probably heaven. not. Probably. What is it? Don't, I can't. Uh, this is the most disgusting piece of <laughs> propaganda that twangs at the heart. And I think the demographic they're after is women, uh, young women and maybe grandmothers. It starts out by talking about, and it's called, um, oh, jeez, what's the theme of it? It's uh, Career for... Ah. For um, You've seen for it. the millennium or something, I don't know. I've but seen it, a billboard it campaign. It has babies yeah. chuckling yeah. and everything, yeah. and a mother thinking of a name to call her child and a career for the child. And it goes on and on with about five examples of a mother saying engineer or yeah. driller. Right. You know, it goes on and the chuckling baby in the background and everything. <laughs> and I immediately thought of you in your rant about UPMC, and it's not health care. Right. It's Sweetness and lightness. Right, right. But so this, a song is, this is one of the most disgusting, dirty Don dig propaganda pieces of preparing yeah. a demographic yeah. Yeah. or something that is just, they're talking about jobs unlimited for a hundred years. Right, <laughs> right. Have you heard it? I, I haven't I haven't heard the ad, but I have seen there are billboards. It's funny you mention this because we were, we were just driving my wife and I through uh, Washington County this past weekend, and there's a lot of drilling going on. And I mm-hmm. guess I guess um, the relationship between drilling and, and pro industry billboards is <laughs> um, there's a there's a strong relationship between those two things. And they have the same kind of thing. They have like a little a little you know child when wide eyed wonder at the world, um, and it says right. you know sci- you know scientist or engineer. Right. <laughs> right. Um, you know, there'll be plenty of both or something along those lines. Yeah, your so, kids don't have to move away. You can be sure that they can stay here because they'll have quality jobs right. for up to 100 years. Right. Your kids can stay, but we'll have to import the bottled water. So yeah. That's, that's, the, that's <laughs> right. the irony. Your kids remain, but the bottle has to come from else. The water has to come I from mean, this is what I regard as the most insidious propaganda because it is such a stretch to say that... Uh, a hundred years of jobs, of quality jobs, will be available to begin with. Right. You know, and 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 focusing it on, I think, young women and maybe grandparents. Right. Is that the is that the idea you? Got I, it's certainly for it's certainly for it's certainly for parents. Yeah. Clearly. I didn't think about the grandparents. And, thing. Yeah, yeah. And and women. I think you're right. Um, I don't know what your problem is, George. That's. <laughs> that should have. That's my range resources. Yeah, Which, right. It's yours. I'm waiting for the I'm waiting for the billboard that says like, um, you know, engineer or um, trial attorney because I could tell you that's <laughs> that's where the real action is going to be. I mean, you see these guys now counter suing the counter suing property owners who are suing the the energy companies for not doing you know for for not mm-hmm. doing what they thought they were going to do, and um, you're seeing a lot of that stuff. And I, the, the most interesting thing to me is just you know this this stuff with the head of um, um, Chesapeake, this Aubrey oh, London guy who just God. seems. To you know, oh, yeah. 
um, yeah. running all kinds of um, oh. running all kinds of games. And he's been. I mean, what's interesting is he has long been um, the, one of the most public faces. I mean, you probably couldn't think of who the CEO of Range Resources is right now. I I couldn't possibly. I don't know who it is. But McClendon has been. He's the Out guy there. like when when you know when TV stories do you know things about the industry. He's the guy who's the smiling happy face of natural gas drilling. And 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 long before his own personal you know on um, uh, business practices became an issue you know there's been a lot of talk about Chesapeake and were they sort of running a game on people and just looking to basically flip these properties that's right um, I actually had rich Fitzgerald of all people at one point say to me because um, there's a lot of discussion at that time about leasing within the city of Pittsburgh itself and rich right, just said right. you know th- this drilling isn't ha- gonna happen people got to realize that some of the some of what's going on here is just people looking to inflate their portfolio so they can turn around and sell it to somebody else right. Which I, I thought was sort of a fascinating thing for um, for Rich to say because he was so strongly was identified with yeah. that industry. Um, so yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I'm totally yeah. with you. I, I, I like I said, I've seen the billboards; they're everywhere. I suppose Joseph we can look at Joseph Goebbels, because uh, you know, was <laughs> a piker lie. compared yeah. to these yeah. guys. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> that's really, it. Well, really. That's it. Oh, and Lynn, Lynn. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, another story I thought that you would bring up too uh, is the uh, Catholic Church chastising George. Uh, Georgetown University. Don't know it. For what? For having the um, the head of uh, Catherine Sebelius uh, uh, oh, for um, speak at um, a graduation oh, yesterday. God. What, picking on the Girl Scouts wasn't enough for that? No, I know the Girl Scout thing is the... <laughs> well, she was, she was um, I mean, she's defending the... the the uh, the healthcare reform right. plan. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know and what? The, and the Catholic Church weighed into this, and, and Georgetown sure. just said, "Well, dropped in. You know, she doesn't represent our views and everything like that. But in, in a climate of university, we expect to have different views." Well, you know, the the, the church's the the church's list of, really uh, of enemies uh, and people who are not to be given uh, any. Yeah, you, you, I mean, I mean, yeah, you, with their own nuns. Yes. The Girl Scouts, cabinet officers, senators, congressmen. You know, it doesn't. Ma- they are off the rails. It is. Off it's fascinating, the isn't rails. it? It's yes. really fascinating to watch the sort of guilt by association just take. I mean, I'm not. I'm not fully conversant on the whole litany of complaints against the Girl Scouts, but I gather that some of it has no, to do No, you know with, what it was? They, they, they supported, like, Doctors Without Borders. Yeah, that's right, Doctors Without Borders. Yeah. Because <laughs> part, some part of what they do, in addition to helping people, including plenty of Catholics down in Haiti, for example, in uh, addition to yeah, healthy, uh, helping these people, some tiny sliver of their work also has to do with contraception. contraception. Okay, so... Oxfam, they feed the hungry. Right. Uh, Doctors Without Borders, like Jesus they, says. They, they minister yeah, to, to the, the, sick. the sick. And um, these and the Sierra Club is another one. Uh, they they you know look, they care about uh, God's great natural creation of this world. And uh, these are subversive and to be shunned organizations, according oh, yeah. to the church. I was saying, if Jesus were here, he would. He would go ballistic. He'd be like his father. He'd he go, go ballistic. ballistic. <laughs> He'd go insane. He really would. I mean, it's He'd not go like he insane. It's not like he told yeah, a famous say, take parable his name about off, it. Uh, your new religion. I'm, yeah, I'm going back to the carpentry. You know. Yeah, yeah, right. 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 Hey, thanks, thanks for, for the, the call. call. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Bye. I mean, that's the whole the whole parable of the Samaritan is the people who pass the si- the man on the side of the road do so because he's unclean, and the Samaritan is the one. Who sees past the religious dogmatism right. to help? Was Je- Jess? Are you the one who said it when I was saying that? And you said, "I was saying if Jesus could come back," and you said they wouldn't. They wouldn't recognize him. They wouldn't recognize yeah. him. Probably not. No. False prophets shall rise, as they say. It's really, it's it's mind-boggling. I just, you know, and you just wonder. I, I mean, I will say. The one good thing is they have been giving Paul Ryan a bit of a hard time in recent months. I don't know if you've followed that at all, but the bishops have, you know, suggested that his budget is his budget proposal. Oh, does not about, seem yeah, Christian. does not it does not square with those values. And well, of course, and then all of a sudden you hear Republicans say, "Well, you really shouldn't be weighing in on these issues. These are political." Ah, <laughs> oh, God, oh Lord. Explain this to me. This I've been carrying around for a while, and I, you're the only person I think may be able to explain this to me. 
Uh, this says the ability of people in America to actually achieve the American dream, meaning to move up the economic ladder, yeah. is very much connected to where they live. Uh, so that there are some areas and states where you got a, more of a shot at rising uh, and others where it doesn't look like you got much of a shot at all. Big all right, sh- which are the states? Well, here's a shocker. Yeah. The ones where you don't rise? Yeah. The South. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right, right. Um, here are the ones who showed uh, that people, where people are more likely to improve their economic standing um, mo- more so than the typical American. Okay, okay. this was right. this above was, average. This was done by the Pew Charitable Trust. Above average Pew. levels of social mobility, <clears throat> as they would say. Okay, Maryland. Yep. Okay. New Jersey. Yep. High tax state. New York. Yep. High tax state. Connecticut. High tax state. Massachusetts. Very high tax state. Michigan. Uh huh. And here's two that are a little the next, last two. Utah. Yeah. And Pennsylvania. <laughs> We made the cut. Really? Yeah. Ooh. We made the cut. You, you're not willing to say high tax state for Pennsylvania? I, you know, I, 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 okay. it's not notoriously so the way like a Massachusetts is or a but, Jersey. Okay, so one of the guys that was like parsing uh, the report's findings says, you know, the study shows that place matters. It shows yeah. the American dream is harder to reach in some places and the South is just the the home of American poverty. It is the native home of American poverty. I don't think the South ever recovered from having slavery taken away from it. But here, here's the thing that made my head spin. The director of the Institute for Research on Poverty, blah, 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 says people are more likely to do better for themselves and their children are likely to do better in states with more educated Mm -hmm. residents and more dynamic economies, mm-hmm. such as those in the Northeast. Mm-hmm. Wait a minute! Last time I looked, the Northeast was called the Rust Belt. It was not known for a dynamic economy. The South was known for dynamic economy. Yeah. Well, how are all of a sudden we in the Northeast, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, how are we now a dynamic economy? Yeah. Explain that to me! Well, I mean, obviously a big part of what drove southern resurgence was people moving down there you know, for jobs for jobs that didn't pay much yeah exactly i i don't i can't i mean can't, i can't explain I can't figure it. no i mean you know i, I kind of go back to i kind of go back to something rick santorum of all people said <coughs> which should be brought up at every possible opportunity this election season which is there are nations in western europe where it is easier to live out the american dream than it is into america that social mobility well, so is true. higher in europe that socialist den of iniquity where the leaders don't have the proper Christian values when it comes to their own marriages. It's easier to get ahead, to live out the American dream than it is here in the New Jerusalem on the other side of the Atlantic. So I'm not surprised at all to find that states um, where there is some provision made for the social well-being of people. How do we end up um, there? I don't, you know, I, I, I don't well, know. This is, but, in Utah, maybe it's maybe it's an LCB thing. <laughs> maybe it's the state store system generates prosperity. I expect, <laughs> a, I expect the Keystone Research Center to have something to say about that in the very near future. Um, oh, man. So yeah, I, I mean, it's no, it's no surprise. And I, I would, uh, you know, I don't know that I would say place matters. It's not like there's something in the water. It's policy that matters. It's the, it's the it's policy the, it's of the, those places. The, but as yeah. you kept saying, high tax state, high tax right. state. Right. High ta- there's right. yeah. There's a climate that allows people some some ability, some to, chance. Yeah, right. And these, and, and yet, that's and and this is part and parcel too of, you know, the t- the states that pay out more than taxes than they get in from the national government also tend to be some of the you know include some of these prosperous states. Obviously, Michigan not necessarily consistent with that, but they're going to be outliers anywhere. Whereas the states that take in more money also tend to be the ones that are. Yeah. I, you know, I don't know what you can say about it. Um, it. Just clearly, clearly, there needs to be a discussion about what prosperity really means. But where you see where Republican policies are absolutely uh, inbred, been there for a long time, is where you don't move yeah. up. Right. It's the South. Yeah. And I don't know how long it'll take people to make these right. connections. Because people yeah. have to realize there are jobs. When when a guy like Rick Perry, governor of Texas, says we've created more jobs and blah blah blah, there are jobs and then there are jobs. 
Oh, he's there creating jobs. jobs there are job. slave wages, and, and you still well, end up on food stamps. Not just that. If they have them. I mean, the funny thing is, a lot of the Texas job creation came as a result of federal, <laughs> federal that's money. That's true, So too. that's the other thing that's kind of ironic about that. All yeah. righty. Well, we are done. Great. And uh, I thank you. I mean, I'm usual. sorry it's over. Yes, always fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, see you. Always. <clears throat> see you next week. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Sokolowski tomorrow? <clears throat> thank you, because I'm losing my voice. Yes, Tom Sokolowski tomorrow. Thanks. Thank you. Have a great day, guys. Lynn Coven Live, Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. and archived at pghcitypaper.com. The opinions expressed on Lynn Coven Live are those of the host and do not necessarily reflect the viewpoints of Pittsburgh City Paper, Steel City Media, and its advertisers.